Hi everyone and welcome back to another lab. Today we will be discussing inter-VLAN routing using SVI on a layer 3 switch. We will start by explaining what inter-VLAN routing is and why it is necessary. Then we will go through the topology, the lab objectives and finally the lab tasks. So first things first, what is layer 3 switch? A layer 3 switch is a high performance device that combines the functionalities of both a traditional switch which operates at layer 2 and a router that operates at layer 3. Unlike a layer 2 switch that operates only on the data link layer to forward traffic based on MAC addresses, a layer 3 switch can also perform routing functions allowing it to make forwarding decisions based on the IP addresses. And that capability enables the switch to route traffic between different VLANs within a network, which is a key requirement in modern enterprise networks where segmentation and efficient traffic management are crucial. Layer 3 switches are designed to handle both intra-VLAN and inter-VLAN traffic with minimal latency, providing high-speed packet forwarding capabilities, and they use routing protocols such as OSPF, ERGRP, and REB version 2 to dynamically exchange routing information with other devices. This integration of switching and routing functions into a single device simplifies the network architecture, which reduces the need for multiple devices and enhances the overall performance and scalability of the network. So what is inter-VLAN routing? Inter-VLAN routing is the process of forwarding network traffic between different VLANs. VLANs are used to segment a large physical network into smaller isolated sub-networks, which can enhance performance and improve security as well as simplify management. However, whilst VLANs effectively isolate broadcast domains, they also prevent direct communication between devices in different VLANs. So inter-VLAN routing solves this issue by enabling devices on separate VLANs to communicate with each other through a layer 3 device, such as a router or a layer 3 switch. So the key component in inter-VLAN routing is a layer 3 device capable of routing packets between VLANs. This device uses switch virtual interfaces or SVIs to create virtual interfaces for each VLAN. Each SVI is assigned an IP address that acts as the default gateway for the devices within its respective VLAN. When a device in one VLAN needs to communicate with a device in another VLAN, it sends the traffic to its default gateway, which is the SVI on the layer 3 device. The layer 3 device then routes the traffic to the appropriate SVI of the destination VLAN, allowing communication to occur. Inter-VLAN routing is essential in modern network environment where different departments or groups require segmentation for security or organizational purposes, but still need to share resources and services. Okay, so with that being said, let's move into the lab topology. And as you can see on the screen, it is a simple topology. We have only one layer three switch that is going to route traffic between two different VLANs. PC1 is in VLAN 10 and PC2 is in VLAN 20. PC1 is connected to the Gig Ethernet 01 interface and PC2 is connected to the Gig Ethernet 02 interface on the layer three switch. The switch has a couple of SVIs, SVI VLAN 10 and SVI VLAN 20. And the objectives of this lab is to show you how you can utilize a layer 3 switch to route between two different networks to allow PC1 to be able to communicate with PC2. Regarding the lab tasks, the first task that we are going to tackle is the end host configuration where we're going to jump into each computer and we're going to configure the appropriate IP address, the subnet mask and the default gateway according to the lab topology and the lab tables provided within the lab. And then we will verify that each computer or each PC has the appropriate IPv4 address information. And then we're going to move into step number two. And step number two, we're going to 
configure both VLANs 10 and 20 on the layer 3 switch according to the table and topology above. So we will create the VLANs and then we will verify our configuration. And then we move to step three where we're gonna configure our access ports. So we're gonna assign the gig ethernet 01 and gig ethernet 02 interfaces with the appropriate VLAN access. And we are going to include the interface description and we are going to force the operation mode for each port to access. We will also to verify our configuration or perform some in-flight checks and then we're going to move into step number four where we are going to perform some SVI configuration where we're going to configure both SVIs on the layer 3 switch and we will verify our configurations. Next we are going to move to step number five where we are going to enable IP routing on the layer 3 switch and then after that we are going to move to step number six and that would be the last step of for this lab and we will perform some connectivity tests. And the first test that we are going to tackle is we are going to ping the default gateway from each PC. And then after that, we will try to make both PCs are able to communicate with each other by binging each PC's IP address. Okay, so we are going to tackle the first task. And the first task is to perform some end host configuration. So we're gonna log into each PC. And then if you click on the stencil and then go from there to desktop and from here, you will be able to see IP configuration. And then from there, you should be able to fill the IP before address details. And in here, I'm gonna say 192.168.10.10. And the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.128. And the default gateway is going to be 192.168.10.1. So after this, let's verify our configuration. So you go to the CLI and from there, you will be able to issue IP config. And then it tells you here that the current IP address or the current IPv4 address is 192.168.10.10. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.128. And finally, the default gateway, which ends with dot one. So that is PC1 is done. And let's do the same thing on PC2. So here I'm going to say 192.168.20. Dot 10 and the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.128 and the default gateway is 192.168.20.1 next let's verify our configuration by going to the CLI or to the command prompt and from there I will issue IP config and here are the IPv4 address details, which are quite similar to what we saw on PC1. Next, we are going to jump into the layer 3 switch and we are going to start creating the VLANs. So I will go to the global config and then from there I'll say VLAN 10 and I'm just going to name it VLAN 10. I will up arrow multiple times to get to the command VLAN 10 and I'll change the VLAN ID from 10 to 20 and I'll do the same thing for that command name and then the name of the VLAN and I'll change that to 20. Next, let's just verify this by issuing show VLAN brief. And you can see that we have got two VLANs that have been created, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Next, we're going to move into step number three, where we're going to configure access port interfaces. So again, I'll go back to global config. And from here, I would say interface gig ethernet 0 slash 1. This interface is connected to PC1. So I'm going to set the description to link to PC1. And I'm going to say dash VLAN 10. And we're going to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. And then we're going to exit. And then we're going to execute the interface gig ethernet 0 slash 2 command. 
And then we're going to set the description as well. We're going to say link to PC2 VLAN 20. Next, we're going to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Next, we can verify our configuration. So the first command that I would like to um, issue to reveal the running config is show running dash config. And then we're going to say section. And here we're going to say giga bit ethernet zero slash one dollar. And you can see this is the current config under this interface. We can do the same thing for zero slash two. And that will reveal the information for the interface that is connected to PC2. Next, let's look at the VLAN assignments. So we're going to say show VLAN brief. And we can see here that the interface is resides in the appropriate VLAN, let's say. So gig ethernet 01, we know is part of VLAN 10 and gig ethernet 02 is part of VLAN 20. And if you wanted to perform some further in-flight checks, you can say show interfaces gig ethernet 0 slash 1. You actually need to include the word switch port. And here you will be able to see that the access mode VLAN is 10, as you can see here on the screen. And that completes step number three. Let's move into step number four, where we are going to configure SVI for both VLANs. So again, I'll go back to global config. And from here, I'll say interface VLAN 10. I'll set the description to SVI 10. And then I'll set the IP address to 192.168.10.1. And the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.128. And then I will exit this. I will do the same thing for VLAN 20. I will set the description first. And then I will set the IPv4 address. Again, let's perform some in-flight checks. So I'll issue the show running config section LAN 10, and then I'll include the dollar at the end. And you can see that we've got the configuration for interface VLAN 10, as you can see on the screen here. And if I up arrow that and change the one to two, we can see the configuration for SVI 20. If you want to look at the operational status for each of the VLANs interfaces, we can issue this command, show IP interface brief. And to filter the output, you can include only LAN by issuing the pipe include LAN. And that will show you these two interfaces or actually three interfaces or three SVIs, but we are not using VLAN one since this is the default. And you can see that VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 are in the up up state, have been configured with the appropriate IPv4 address, and they are good to go. One last check that you can do is you can issue show interfaces VLAN 10. And here it will give you information about the physical status and the data link layer status of the interface. You will be able to determine the MAC address of the physical interface. You can see the description. You can see the IPv4 address information and additional information related to the interface statistics. Next, let's move into step number five, where we are going to enable routing on the switch. So what we need to do, we need to go back to global configuration mode. And from here, I would say IP routing. And then we can verify our configuration by issuing two commands. The first one is show run pipe include routing. You can see the command is there from the running config, or you can reveal the routing table. So we would say show IP route. And you will see that we have two networks that both 
networks are connected. So you can see the C here stands for connected, as you can see from the legend. And this is the network, 192.168.10.0. And similarly with this line, 192.168.20.0. And both of them are directly connected. Okay, so with that being done, we can move into step number six, where we are going to perform some connectivity tests. And let's jump into our PCs. So I'm going to jump back to my topology. And from here, I'll go back to my PC1 CLI. And from here, I would issue the ping command to ping the default gateway. And we have successful ping. Now let's try to ping PC2 by issuing ping 192.168.20.10. And just to let you know that the first ICMP echo message has failed due to ARP, but then it worked after this. If we repeat the same test, we have reachability and connectivity between PC1 and PC2. This means that PC2 is able to communicate with the default gateway and is also is able to communicate with PC1. That's it, folks, for this video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn notifications so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop a comment below. I read all your comments and I'm here to assist you. Remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. So stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.